Hello everyone, tonight on the program plans underway to ensure all Ghanaians with SIM cards re-register with their national IDs. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya says this is to protect against cyber fraud. Everybody will have to register their SIM with a national ID number. So we all have to do that, otherwise we lose that SIM. IMF puts Ghana's debt to GDP ratio for last year at 78%, contradicting government's own data. What do we make of it? I'll be speaking with an economist. Plus, the Ghana Tourism Federation welcomes plans to reopen cinemas and theatres as the COVID 19 pandemic gets under control and the economy reopens. Thanks for being with us tonight on Business Live. My name is Daryl Powell. Details after this break. And we start off with the Ghana CEO Summit, where the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, has indicated plans are underway to ensure that all Ghanaians with SIM cards re-register them with the National ID card uh, latest beginning of July this year. Now, according to him, this is part of plans to rid the country's cyberspace of fraud. He spoke at the 5th Ghana CEO Summit, organized in Accra. My colleague, Bismarck Aousa, has more. The exercise, according to Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, will help monitor and track down persons engaged in criminal activities such as SIM box fraud and mobile money fraud. The Vice President, however, noted that any individual who fails to take part in the exercise risks losing his or her phone number. I expect as the uh, Minister for Communications and Dig Digitalization, uh, we'll soon announce which, the, that we will all, from maybe end of June or beginning of July this year, everybody will have to register their SIM with a national ID number. So we all have to do that, otherwise we lose that SIM. Uh, and that will really give us uh, a real um, identity for all Momo transactions, for example. And it then takes away fraud that is taking place, whether it's SIM box or through Momo and so on. We will, we will discard all of that. The vice president expressed government's commitment to rebuild a resilient economy through policy response and strategies. Meanwhile, Director General of the State Interest and Governance Authority, Stephen Asama Boatin, says the authority is charting a new course of partnership with private sector as one of many solutions being churned out for post-pandemic economic recovery. A strategic partnership that is based on shared interests inclusive prosperity and sustainable growth. Leveraging the opportunities offered by the CEO Summit will enable us to remake our leadership styles, transform businesses and change the way we do business in the private sector. Managing Director for Ghana Commercial Bank Kofi Adomako also addressing the summit expressed that available credit has been made for creative business pitches and SMEs. This creates favorable opportunity for competition by aggregating our huge customer base and data. On the back of a successful industry-wide partnership, we will be able to significantly improve the payments landscape and drive the financial inclusion agenda in a cost-effective manner. First Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Maxwell Opoku Afari, says his outfit is committed to supporting financial institutions to ensure the economy is back on the growth path post-COVID-19. Resetting the economy back to resilience will be a gradual process over the next two or three years and will require our collective 
and collaborative support and burden sharing to build back better. For the Bank of Ghana, we are committed to ensuring that the banking and other non-bank financial institutions remain resilient, inclusive, and supportive of resetting Ghana's post-COVID economy back to stability and growth. Some CEOs and captains of industry were rewarded for their outstanding performances. Chief Executive Officer of the Multimedia Group, Kwesi Chum, emerged the CEO of the decade within the media category. And congratulations to my boss, Kwesi Chum, for uh, being awarded CEO of the decade. Uh, he truly deserves it. Uh, we are going to take you back to this, the vice president's talk about re-registering uh, SIM cards. Well, we are getting reaction from telecoms giant MTN, which says that the re-registration will help in its quest to improve its Know Your Customer policy. Sam Kwanting is Chief, Chief Corporate Services Officer at MTN Ghana. We are MTN, we uh, have always said, and one of our taglines are that we are leading the delivery of a bold new digital world. And in, the, in that you know, um, effort, customer KYC is important. We're currently working with the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization to roll out re-registration of um, our subscribers as well as all, all subscribers. And um, in that vein, it would help to tackle fraud. We, at the back end, have done several initiatives on our systems. We are continuing to engage with all other stakeholders to be able to continue fighting the, this fraud. And um, in terms of digital health fraud, it is not unique to Ghana. It, is, it happens everywhere that the economy has been digitized. But then we as operators are doing our part with other stakeholders to ensure that we keep abreast and to make sure customers are protected and um, we would be able to curb the fraud activities of those out there. And the KYC would go a long way to help in that regard. In the news tonight, Ghana's debt to GDP ratio at the end of December 2021 was higher than what was put out by government. That's according to the International Monetary Fund after it concluded its Article 4 consultation on Ghana's economy. There's more in this report. The fund puts Ghana's debt in relation to the total value of the economy in percentage terms at 78. This is higher than government's own data put out in the budget of 76.1%. This was after the fund added the ESLA debt of 7.63 billion Ghana cities. However, government sources insist it didn't add the ESLA debt because it doesn't believe that it should be classified as a direct exposure to government debts, a position that the IMF actually disagrees. The Washington-based lender in its assessment warned that if measures are not taken to deal with any sector debt, it could pose a major risk to the economy in terms of the rising debt stock adding that improving collections should be seen as a priority for now. It again welcomed planned audits of the COVID-19 emergency spending by government as well as other budget areas, arguing that it would help guide future spending plans. The fund, on the other hand, wanted some tough measures taken to improve the revenue situation. But despite all these concerns, the fund have noted that the economy is indeed on a rebound due to some policy measures taken by government. The IMF is even projecting that the economy will grow at 4.8%, slightly lower than what government is projecting for this year, whilst inflation will be within the range of 8% target as already put out by the Bank of Ghana. It noted that the Ghana Cash Program also has the potential to transform the economy, supported by leveraging on the Africa Free Trade Area Program. Dr. Edu Osisakodia is an economist. He joins me to uh, discuss uh, this story. So uh, welcome to our program tonight. Once again, the IMF expressing worry about the country's debt to GDP ratio, which it says hit 78% last year. Uh, and there's a debate really uh, as whether or not government has been putting out the right figures, but that is not what we are looking at. What, what is the way forward in narrowing the deficit as we have breached the 70% uh, dreaded threshold? Well, a number of options are available. I think some of these options, this administration has already uh, started doing them in the year 2017. When we were talking about 
debt reprofiling and debt restructuring. That is to make sure that you borrow at a lower interest rate and replace it with uh, the earlier debt, at, uh, which had a higher interest rate. And then another way is to also borrow for a longer maturity period. So for example, you borrow for say 35 years to replace a loan which you are supposed to pay, which has a maturity period of say five years. Mm. So the debt restructuring pro a program has been going on since 2017. The immediate option now is for government to slow down borrowing uh, because we cannot continue as a country, we cannot continue to borrow at the same rate as we are borrowing now, given a high level of the public debt. The next option is for government to, even if they want to borrow at all, they should do the domestic borrowing, what we call the city-denominated borrowing, where uh, though the bond is in cities, but uh, we can allow foreigners to bring in foreign currency, say dollars or uh, euros, to come and buy our city-denominated bonds. Mm. Then they, the, 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 the other point, which is the major point uh, to reduce the public debt, which is also because the, the budget deficit is a major contributor to the public debt. So it is the onus lies on us to raise uh, domestic revenue in order to bridge the gap between revenue and expenditure. So now the domestic resource mobilization is a major policy for government to embark on. And that is why they started introducing new taxes and all that. But I am of the view that the introduction of the new taxes is not enough to bridge the gap between the revenue and expenditure. There are various ways that we can raise revenue uh, to get more uh, money to bring down the budget deficit. We have talked about some of these things, we have talked about them for a long time. Uh, tax exemptions bill is still on the, on the floor of parliament. It has not been debated yet. Uh, we have been mentioning the property tax, property rate, whichever way you call it, that has not been implemented. We have been talking about getting enough from the natural resource, though it is a long-term project, but we can do that. We have been talking about plugging these loopholes and all that. So we need to have a holistic approach to domestic resource mobilization. This is the only way to go as of now, because government cannot continue to borrow at this current rate. Other than that, we may put ourselves into a more distress, debt distress position. But in your introduction, you said you are not interested in debating whether the government put out a good figure or a bad figure. I am not going to also debate on that, but I have a little information. Okay. But Ghana government reports only the central government's public debt. It is different from what we call the other reporting of the general public debt. The general public debt is the practice by the IMF. Ghana government reports only the central government's debt. It is not as if this government is being mischievous with us. It has been the practice over the years. But why IMF asks any other borrowing to the central government borrowing is that usually they want to compare performances across countries. So if Ghana is using a different approach to report our debt, and maybe Kenya or Nigeria is using another approach, there may be some discrepancies in the comparison. So the IMF embarks on what they call the general public debt report. In this case, any other debt, even if it's your local government, so even if the District Assembly Common Fund, if this Assembly goes to you know, borrow, not in the name of the central government, mm. but in their own name. I am right. when they are reporting the public debt for Ghana, they would add that to a public debt because they are interested in the general case so that they can compare countries. That is why we see that discrepancy. So it's not as if this government is being mischievous. It has been our practice over the years, but the IMF, because they want to compare performances across countries, they add every other debt, whether it's ESLA, whether it's a banking sector cleanup, they don't okay. care. They add it so they can compare countries. Um, either ways, it doesn't look good. And hey, I, I think that it's going to be very difficult to uh, convince government not to borrow at this point um, as we look forward to how we can fix our debt. You're not saying they shouldn't borrow, they should slow down. They should slow down their borrowing. Yes, I, I yes. Think they that... cannot go the rate that we used to go yeah. during 2019. Looking at the rate at which they are borrowing, is, is going to be difficult to tell them to slow it down because <laughs> it looks like that's the, that's the only option. I, but I, <laughs> I, I see that they are trying 
to um, get some more revenue, mobilize some more revenue and all of that. How is, how is that plan working, do you think? Through taxes. Hello? What, what's the question again? Yes, I'm saying that, I'm saying that well, because we can't really uh, do away with borrowing, we are asking them to slow it down. The government is devising at, devising at the means of uh, fixing the situation, if you like. And so they have introduced taxes aimed at um, getting some more revenue, uh, getting some more money in the system. How effective do you think that is? Well, usually when we are talking about the revenue mobilization, first of all, we want to compare it as a ratio of GDP. Uh, yes, um, we are, the tax revenue as a ratio of GDP is around 15%. Uh, but for the rebasing, it will mm. be around 20 by now. Then the domestic revenue, which is the tax revenue plus the non-tax revenue, uh, we should be doing over 25%, which is the, the average for the developing countries. Ghana is doing roughly 19 to 20 percent. So it clearly shows that we are not getting to the, the mark that we have to do. So we have to, but the domestic revenue growth rate has picked up. It was as low as 11.9 percent in the year uh, 2016, then right. it rose to 23 percent in the year 2017, that's falling to 15 percent. So that revenue growth rate uh, even though it went up but has fallen down, it must pick up again. We know why, because of COVID. We know why. And so the government must pick up the measures. And I think I've already outlined some of the measures that we can find in the budget. But my point is that it shouldn't be just introducing one or two taxes to send a signal to Ghanaians that you want to mobilize revenue. It should be a holistic approach. Right. If you are telling Ghanaians that now we need money, so pay a little over on, on the fuel, pay a little on your transport fares, then why don't you pass the tax exemptions bill? Why don't you get into place the, the property tax mm. to also send a strong signal to everybody that we are embarking on a holistic approach? Why are we still doing the interpersonal revenue collection? Why is somebody still collecting revenue in cash? What has happened to the digitization that we have been talking about? So let's embark on a holistic approach. What we have done is not enough. We can do more as a country. We can get all of us get on board. Even if it's one C that everybody is contributing. Okay. 15 million people, one C is 15 million Ghana cities uh, over the period. So let's all do well to, you know, contribute. So I think that it should be a holistic approach. I am not, I'm not sure what you have done so far is enough. There's more, as we say in the primary school, there's more room for improvement. There's more room for improvement, <laughs> certainly. Dr. Dousu Sarkodia, it's my first conversation with you and I enjoyed it. Thanks so much. Looking forward to speaking with you another time. Mm -hmm. This is Business Live. When we come back, we are going to be talking, reopening the economy uh, post-COVID-19. Government is talking about plans to open cinemas and theatres. We'll have the, chief, uh, the executive secretary of Gatov with us. Don't go anywhere.
Right. And uh, if, if you watch our international summaries, you'd realize that as COVID-19 infections go down, um, countries are opening up and receiving tourists. So that takes us to the Ghana Tourism Federation, which has welcomed President Kufado's announcement that the Ghana Health Service and the Ghana Tourism Authority are working together to reopen cinemas and theaters. This is where I bring in Executive Secretary of GATOF, Emmanuel Frimpong, for a conversation. And I'm excited to speak with you tonight uh, because at least we get to start on a positive note, Emmanuel. Um, how is the Federation receiving this news? Well, it's, it's a welcoming news, as we have always indicated. Uh, we believe the theaters, cinemas, and pubs, they have what it takes to adhere to the protocols. But there hasn't been that engagement between um, the agencies and the owners of um, the theaters and cinemas. Mm. So mm -hmm. having to hear the president mention that they are now engaging them and looking forward to uh, putting the protocols together so that they can uh, gradually ease up and, and open their businesses. So we welcome it. We hope it will be much quicker than what probably we are thinking. So All right. We are excited. Another good news I heard, uh, the Ministry of Finance signing a uh, compact agreement for post-COVID-19 transformation with tourism and trade ministries under the Ghana Cares program. Are you guys benefiting from this too? Uh, well, uh, I think last week we woke up to receive this good news. Uh, honestly speaking, we haven't had any engagement with anybody yet. Okay. So we don't really know exactly what this compact um, is all about and mm how it is going to impact our uh, activity. Obviously, it's going to impact it, but the how, we don't know. Uh, if it is actually going to be grants alone or is actually going into infrastructure. So okay. we don't know yet exactly how that will be uh, distributed or shared. And I'm so told we that have to we have 30 yeah. seconds on this. Uh, the Bank of Ghana is doing something with the Federation uh, you want to tell us about that in 30 seconds? Uh, well, um, it's actually the Bank of the uh, Ministry of Finance and then uh, TUC, the social partners, okay. uh, as part of uh, what they want to do to support our industry. Uh, they are looking forward to training a number of people between 5,000 to 10,000 of our members, which we are still working on the modality. So hopefully, in the next coming weeks, uh, we will hear this in the media, and then um, our members can enjoy those who uh, had to go home because of COVID-19, those whose businesses are still going down and they don't know what to do. They will receive some sort of training, capacity building to be able to uh, restart their businesses. On that brighter oh, note, nice. thank you so much, Emmanuel from Paul. We'll talk later. That's uh, Business Live tonight. Once again, congrats to our own KT for being uh, a judge or recognized the best uh, CEO of the decade. Congratulations to you, sir. That's Business Live tonight. We are back same time tomorrow.